And here we go. We are back in the studio with Victoria Grant here at Whistle FM. I'm your host, Bren Masson. You're listening to Fresh Waves, and we're talking with Victoria about all kinds of fun things. We are going to touch now a little bit on the solstice celebrations, which I understand the First Nations used to... Is it okay if I say First Nations? Well, I guess what I would say is the solstice celebration is it's different. for everyone. <laughs> it, and it's different across the country, depending on, I mean, think about it. We're doing a December, December the, the winter solstice here will be different than the winter solstice in British Columbia. Yeah. Because it's a different climate. It's a different the winter solstice in the north would be totally different. Yeah, there, uh, it's still the longest day of the year for everybody. longest night of the year for everyone. Yeah, but it's kind of hard to say that when you're living in the Arctic and it's dark all the time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Very yeah. little definition thereof. Yeah, you know? exactly. Although they, you know, daylight starts to come pretty quick after that. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, and even at the winter time, they say it's dark dark but then during the day it does get a little pinky well we're going to white horse i've never seen it we're going to white horse tomorrow tomorrow morning oh my and right now they have uh, i was looking at the um hours of daylight so it th- they effectively say the sun rises at 10:24 and it sets i think it was 2:54 or 3:54 i'm not quite sure the wow. sun is set, so they, they have less than five hours of sunlight or daylight. That's tough. That would be really hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to leave and come home. <laughs> <laughs> I even found it difficult last year in Costa Rica because it's so close to the equator that it's the sun comes up at six and it goes down at six. Yeah. And there's no in between. And even though it's hot and sunny, so I'm expecting it to be light until 930 at night, it's hot and sunny, but it's dark at six. Yeah. And it doesn't go down slowly. It's a really fast descent into darkness, and a very all of a sudden it's morning light out. It's really weird. It is. It is. I I actually find it when I go down south. I find because it's about seven thirty, you know, where we go, and and uh, when the sun sets. But it's also daylight at seven thirty. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's just a totally different. Yeah. Different vibe, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Before the first so contact, think about it. before first yeah. contact, there still would have been celebrations at this time exactly. of the year. And, and if we're talking about Anishinaabe celebrations, that's the, 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 that's our area. That's right. what we're talking about. Right. And and so yes. The, the what would the celebrations have entailed? Do you know the? I I actually don't know a lot about the the the, the celebrations, <laughs> other than it's that time of the year where you're you're. You know, it's it's the end of the dark and the beginning of new light. It's it's a beginning of rebirth. There's a lot of things tied to the medicine, uh, to the well, what we call the circle of life, or what is now mm-hmm. most people talk about as the medicine wheel. Right. And and so it's all tied to the calendar, and it, it, it's it's a, it's a celebration of, you know, of I guess making it through the dark time and looking forward to the d- light. That would stand to reason, and that's yeah. the same with so many cultures. So, when you, um, we've talked about celebrations before, where it's difficult to know the old celebrations if they've kind of been pushed out of your culture, and I guess that's one of the things for reconciliation and and reclaiming of yeah, the old ways. It, it, it is, it, you know, one of the things is interesting because. Um, when we were, I, I had was speaking with Pauline Shirt, who came to Stouffville last um, on Monday night. Yes, was it Monday night or it Tuesday? was Monday night? Monday night. Um, her and I were talking about the solstice, and and because there's going to be a, 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 a they're going to have a celebration of the solstice at the First Nation School in Toronto, and she and I were talking about what that means and the changes and and uh, I said to her you know I don't know a lot about this stuff and she said and that's understandable she said you where you are at this part of Canada in the east what happened to your people and the taking away of culture was dramatic 
And, and she said, so I un completely understand. And, and even what were those ceremonies? What were those things? Um, those, that all went underground. And, you know, I grew up in a, in a household where my grandfather um, probably practiced ceremony as part of his life, mm -hmm. but certainly didn't tell us about it because we were ca being raised Catholics. We were went to church. We we were celebrating Christmas. You know, we'd hear talk about the solstice, and but it wasn't as something that was a celebration of sorts in our house. So you lost all of that culture, and then how do you get it back? Because the people who had the keys to that culture are long gone. Um, and and who says it has to be the same? No, it doesn't have to be the same. It has to, you know, I guess one of the things I, I have come to realize is our culture was so tied to the natural cycle of Earth, the natural cycle of life. Um, it, it is about being close to nature and about working with the, you know, working in that area of nature and natural environment. Right. That, there are, you know, some of the ceremony wasn't lost. Not, you know, not all of it was lost. And there were some people who had it, who kept it. And sometimes it is come, it is revitalizing. And so things like the Medewin Society, that's, they are, that's what they are, is they are the keepers of ceremony and keepers of that spirituality. And so they'll be sharing that with you and the rest of the world eventually. I know that some well, of the ceremonies are being kept very close right now, which is understandable too. You could have gone um, for the first time ever in a long time under the Parliament of World Religions Conference. Mm -hmm. the, uh, they had a, a Lodge of Nations where Indigenous peoples from across Canada were part of that conference and shared ceremony probably the, in the first public sh uh, sharing of ceremony within a r religious environment th that happened i mean i think it was a big a, a really big thing because to think that they were doing this publicly because of the fear you know th it all went underground for so long and now to be able to bring it back now to be able to bring it back and you know there will probably be some criticism about doing that. There will probably be people who don't think they should have did that. There will probably be people who are celebrating that they did that. Well, we yeah. live in a very, it's a very tough, I think it's a very challenging um, time with all of that stuff, with all of that kind of, um, I don't want to say reclamation. Um, with that, all of that, maybe it is re reclamation of oneself, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean we have to go back to how we did it before. Exactly. No. You know, I, I he often hear people talk about, I'm a traditionalist. What does that mean, you're a traditionalist? <laughs> like, uh, I'm not a traditionalist, although people would tell me, I, you know, I have, I behave in a traditional way. So it, it's, what, what does that mean? And, and, you know, my grandfather used to say, what matters is your values and knowing who you are and where you're from. That's what matters. And, and, and you know, he was very, um, I think he was very wise. And, and this is a man who, you know, he fought in the First World War, um, came back to Canada. He was a sniper. He, he got an honorary medal from during that time, came back home. Um, he blocked a river. He, he blew out a dam, um, a hydro dam on his family hunting territory. Um, and, you know, at the time, nobody ever found out about it, but there were certain people who did. But, you know, that kind of, that, so he was, you know, while he was, and if you asked him who, why he fought in the First World War, he would tell you he fought for the Queen and our country. Hmm. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting, it's, there's so many competing discussions and so many competing interests in there. Because... Y 
And when I think of the medicine willing, walking the medicine, which we talked about before we came on air, mm-hmm. we, we, as we walk the med- as we walk the journey circle of life, we say that in our own culture, we say that everybody's a part of that circle of life, you know, all, all four people. And we use the four colors to illustrate the, those four colors of people on this earth. Well, we know we're going to meet up. That's been, you know, that's been part of our culture that we're going to meet up. But we're also going to learn from each other. And so my grandfather, while, so it made sense that, you know, he fought for the queen in this country. They also thought they were getting, the treaties were better deals. Then the Indian Act came in, which took any power of those treaties and gave it to the Minister of Indian Affairs. So, you know, those are, but if we ask ourselves, how do we work through that stuff? How do we get beyond that stuff? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I hope Canada for the next 150 years is going to be a different country. Yeah, I hope it is too. I hope it is too. I hope it's a, <clears throat> I hope that through education and learning and understanding that we can become a better country than we've ever been in the past. The best country we can yep. possibly be. Now, the library is starting to run some really interesting programs, and I'm very pleased with what I see happening at the Whitchurch Stouffville Library. I'm hoping that someday there will be something in this town that, more than a a plaque in a park, that commemorates the culture and the the vibrancy that this town has always had, long before settlers first got here, and that the wind that will... We'll find a place and a home in Stouffville for all kinds of historical reasons and for moving forward. I think it's a good thing. You know, you always have to know where you come from in order to move forward. <laughs> yeah. And I think it would be really great when, when these programs at the library start selling out and we can get more and more of them here because I, I think that they're really worthwhile. The education value is really worthwhile. So we're going to talk about a couple of those programs after this next little break. Jason, take it away. We'll pay some bills here at the station and we'll be right back you're listening to fresh waves Hey everyone, this is Lil J. Join me every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern for The Block Party, a two-hour journey of the best in the Canadian underground dance music scene, featuring tracks and DJ mixes from Canada's emerging artists, from the disco hits of the 70s to the latest dance floor fillers. No lineups or cover charges, it's your weekly free access to the beats that are packing dance floors in Canada and around the world. The Block Party, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on 102.9 Whistle FM and online at whistleradio.ca. And we're back on Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson. We're talking with Victoria Grant here this morning. Now, Victoria, I understand that at the beginning of the council meeting the the new council that has come into Stouffville as every municipality has had their new council sworn in now you did a land acknowledgement tell us a little bit about that so I was asked to do a land acknowledgement for the inauguration and um, basically what I did is I introduced myself and in, in what I would s- my in my language and then translated to t- let the, to t- tell what I was saying and then I really talked a little bit about what a land acknowledgement is about and that is it's a for me it's a way of learning about the place I'm at or where the place you know the history of of who was here when what treaties are here who we and so um, so when I did the land acknowledgement while I acknowledged here on Winda, the Winda at Huron people and the Anishinaabe people. I also talked about the dish with one spoon, that this because that's part of that 
treaty that was signed or or the agreement or what however you would call it we mm-hmm. have, it's often referred to as the earliest treaty in this area um the dish with one spoon which is um the Haudenosaunee and the uh, Anishinaabe and the Huron Wendat are all part of that and it was to look and protect the lands around the great lakes and uh then i talked about the Williams Treaty that has just been settled with the seven first nations that are Anishinaabe across this area and uh it was i think it went over very pretty well and uh it was nice to you know and I, and i thanked the town for actually thinking about doing this because i really think land acknowledgments are something that gives people a sense of where you are i you know i i would hate to see them become um nothing like a yeah, blah, 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 yeah, blah 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 when people you do, say them without but really, meaning exactly really thinking about what you're doing mm-hmm. like what's your acknowledgement and I, I and and you acknowledge the people who live here all of us who live here mm-hmm. and, and all of us with the responsibility now to uphold those values yeah, to of the one stewardship to yes. the land yeah yeah, same exactly. thing. Exactly, yeah. I was talking to York Regional Forest people, actually, about the fact that they keep leaving us, the people who back onto the forest and live all around the forest, out of all of their decision-making. And they don't ever consult us. They don't ask us to help. They don't ask our opinion. We are the stewards of that land. The other people that just come and go for a walk on a Saturday afternoon and they're there for 25 minutes, they come and they go. We live there every day. We are the yeah. stewards of that land, and we should feel like we are part of what goes on there. And I think this is the same for Stouffville or any other place in Ontario and to understand with the roots of this and understand that we all have a responsibility for the land that we live on is a good thing. Exactly. Yeah. And and I I think one of the things though, I think in interesting enough, I, you know, we have um po- our political system is 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 really challenging in all of that in the sense of are when you know the people who are looking say for the region area i don't know how they're they're appointed probably through some governance ag- agency mm-hmm. but the people who appointed them are the people who've been elected by us yes to do that job to represent us yeah <laughs> at that table yeah <laughs> Funny how that works. I yeah. think they often lose sight of that at that table, let me tell you. It's mm-hmm. good when people go to the council meetings in any municipality so that they can be a part of what's going on in their community and make sure that the people that they have elected are doing what they were elected to do, which is yeah. represent the people that voted them in. Um, okay, so... No, not represent the people that voted them in. Represent all represent the people. Represent all of the people. Yes, cause you're the, right. It becomes more than the people who voted them in. That's true. Because not everybody votes for the same but person. But we also vote for people with an idea, and a, yes. and a process that they're going to that they're going to fight for. So we can't expect those people if we disagree with them to yeah n- to change their mind. But, but at least you have a voice. T- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It is. Um, okay, so the library. You also did the land acknowledgement for the new library when it opened. And we've had some really cool programs happen at the library recently. Yeah, Shauna, um, Shauna and the library staff have been fantastic in trying to create something on an ongoing basis. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we first talked about trying to do it once a month for four months in a row. Well, uh, guests don't always line up like that. No. <laughs> it would be nice in the way yeah. uh, if it did. But <laughs> and it, and you, you want to put some thought into who you have come. Right. So the first time, uh, the, in the first discussion, I went and talked about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and how that all came about. Um, and then um, on Monday night, we had Pauline Shirt, who, uh, r- who was a residential school, who went to a residential school. And... Um, And she spoke to the room. And the room was actually, we had quite a number of people there. Uh, I might say, I'm trying to think, we did it in a circle form. So we probably had 30 people there, 35 people there. And it was, it was, she was amazing. I mean, of course, she, I, I think she's amazing anyways. But what she did is she shared her story. And, and I, I would tell you the biggest thing in her story was, 
the need for forgiveness, the need for, as a survivor, for to be able to forgive. Hmm. Because if you can't forgive, you're wrapped up into... Well, that's what Nelson Mandela said yeah. when he walked out of prison in South Africa, is he had to forgive his captors or he would always be in prison. Yeah. And, and she talked about, you know, the history that, um, you know, as she said, I can only share my story. I can't share everybody's story. And, and she talked about how she dealt with it. And, but the interesting thing is she was eight years old when she went away to residential school. And by then, she, you know, I, the theory that everything you're going to be, you learn by the time you're five years old, yep. really stands true because she was immersed in her culture immersed in, and I mean in her culture and her language and and in ceremony which is all part of her culture and uh, and that stayed with her that through all of her her years at residential school hmm. and you know um, as she said we, she was a bit headstrong so she had some challenges but you know th th sometimes she said I uh, I made a friend with one of the nuns who would get me to the library and that was her escape was the library reading books and you know it's just a fa it was a fascinating evening listening to her and uh, and really all she did all the talking and and just you know at the end she said I I don't in this case I don't like doing a question and answer period after because it's you you never know what kind of question you're going to get, or yeah. And sometimes it's not a question that people th are comfortable are asking. comfortable answering. Yeah, yeah. Even though, but it was it was a remarkable. And then she talked to everybody afterwards. We, we all kind of stood around and had some conversation, and but everybody really appreciated it. And so um, we hope in January or February that we'll have the chief of the Huron Windat speak at the yeah, library. Because he lives in Quebec at the moment, doesn't he? He does. Well, that's where their yeah, that's, that's where, where their, their home territory is, yeah. is now and where they live in I'm trying to Windaki area. So I, he's so we're hoping to have him come and we'll continue to have people like um uh, you know, we'll look at him and then we'd like to have somebody from the Williams Treaty come and speak about the Williams Treaty. And okay. and because that's the area you know, when you think about it, that's the area, we that that's where we live, within the Williams Treaty. Okay, and what is the, the just give us a brief picture of what that looks like. Um, I guess what I would say is, just recently, um, I think the settlement was uh, 1.4, uh, no, I can't even remember now, but it was, they just, had a huge financial settlement with all those seven First Nations on things that were were not um, for the I guess un what's the word what I would say is for the things they didn't do that they should have done under the uh, under the Williams Treaty. Okay. And and so they've the, the government the government on our behalf has settled with those seven First Nations and. We all have, as treaty people, we're all a part of that treaty as part of, and, and so, you know, it's something that is, is our responsibility as citizens of this area. Right. So you're going to bring someone in who's just going to talk about the, the, the bones of that? Yeah. Exactly. Treaty and yeah. what it means and what it means. What, what has been what's settled. the responsibility? What are their rights under it? What are, what responsibilities, uh, you know, that are imposed on us uh, through that treaty? And okay, so. well, we'll look forward to that. Let us know when it is, and we'll definitely um, put something together yeah. here on the station to promote it. Um, earlier this year, I took part in a blanket ceremony over at the library. Yeah, and that was fascinating as well. Um, it's hard to describe exactly what a blanket ceremony is until you're actually doing it. Um, but I, one of my jobs for the evening was to read about original treaties f through the eyes of the settlers, the, the government at the time here in Canada, and read what the treaty said. It was really hard. 
It was really difficult to play that role because I didn't want to be that person. So it was really eye-opening. Yeah. It was eye-opening standing on my my patch because <laughs> everybody has a blanket to stand yeah. on. Mine was still pretty big at the time. And to to read that as if I was that government. Yeah, it really it, gives you pause. It, it, it is a I think it's a a pretty incredible um uh, exercise for people to go through. It's really interesting because the other thing that um, we I've seen done with that exercise is people have tied it instead of making it a Canadian blanket Thing. exercise. Yeah. They've made it. They've went from Canada to a very local. Oh. The history of the local area. Interesting. Which really, think about it. You know, think about. Georgina Island, think about Scugog, yeah. and think of York Region. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about how big that blanket would be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a big blanket. <laughs> you know, it would be, there would be, if you think about the blanket exercise and the process, because it's a process of elimination, right? Right. Is what it is. Yep. It was very interesting because we had the group of us that had signed up and were at the library in one of the rooms participating. The number of people who stopped by to look in the window, because we were kind of in a fishbowl type of room, to look in the window and see what we were doing. I said at the end of, in one of my comments that I wish that there was a courtyard that we could have done this in so that people who were curious and were interested could stop by and just look. Because yeah. a lot of people don't know what it is. And when they hear First Nations, Blanket, thing they go what is that and one lady said to me i'm not going there i don't want to sit on the floor cross-legged and smoke a peace pipe and i said really do you honestly think that that's what would be going on isn't that a bit of a hollywood movie that we're trying to get away from i mean this is just such a weird impression of what it would be first of all you're not allowed to smoke in the library secondly i, I don't know i'm too old to sit cross-legged on the floor for any length of time <laughs> i wouldn't be able to get up <laughs> so it was it was kind of shocking to hear that people still have that bizarre stereotypical idea of what was going to go on and I think those people that were looking in by and large mostly were new Canadians and they were very 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 curious and like we've talked about yeah. before you and I it, it, education is just the key it's the key to exactly, everything yeah. and to be able to educate them in a way that they wouldn't have felt like they had to participate but they would have still learned a lot just from yeah. hearing what we were reading about just from seeing yeah. The visual on that blanket ceremony is is tremendous. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to be standing there as we are, but when you look around the room and you visually see things becoming smaller and people cramming together, it's it's very powerful. It really says a lot. You know, when they say a picture says a thousand words, it's really true sometimes, yeah. isn't it? It really is. Well, we have to take a break because it's the top of the hour. We will be right back. You are listening to Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson. We're talking with uh, Victoria Grant, and we've got her for a few more minutes after this. So stay tuned because we've got more to tell you. Coming right up.